School health is an important aspect of any community health program. It is an economical and powerful means of raising community health in future generations. William Fisher, an English dentist who practiced towards the end of the 18th century, spent a lot of time advocating for required examinations and treatment of children in schools. This was because he was so concerned by the high caries experience and lack of treatment in the child population. In India, for the first time, a medical examination of school children was carried out in Baroda City in 1909. School health services can be defined as the procedures established to appraise the health status of pupils and school personnel, to counsel pupils, parents and others concerning appraisal findings, to encourage the correction of remedial defects, to assist in the identification and education of handicapped children, to help prevent and control disease, and to provide emergency service for injury or sudden sickness. Let us now look at some of the benefits of school dental programs. These school-based dental services not only assist in enhancing the health of the children and staff, but also counsel and motivate them to treat any conditions that may already be present. It also aids in the detection and teaching of children with disabilities and aids in the prevention and management of diseases. Additionally, it offers medical assistance in case of an accident or severe illness. Moving ahead, what are the elements of a school oral health program? Well, there are six main elements or components of the school's oral health programs. The first element talks about improving school community relations. One of the first steps in organizing a dental health program is forming an advisory committee. It should include representation from parents, teachers, school administration, dental and health officials, and lastly, the community leaders. This committee has mainly three tasks. First is to acknowledge and publicize the dental needs of the school children. Secondly, the committee is responsible for addressing the school administration's concern in the promotion of the oral health of the students. Thirdly, Representatives must also promote oral health awareness. After improving the school community relations, the second component is conducting a dental inspection. A program of dental inspection is in question when the prevalence of dental disease among school children is determined to be 95% or higher. While the majority of the population supports it, some people believe that studying a disease that is almost universally prevalent would be a waste of money. Like any other program, this too has its benefits and limitations. This inspection serves as a basis for school dental health instruction as well as helps with the collection of baseline and cumulative data for the evaluation of the school dental health programs organized. It also helps build a positive attitude in the child towards the dentist and dental care and hence motivates both the parent and the child to seek adequate professional care. Additionally, for all the teachers, students and dentists concerned with dental health, this inspection may act as a fact-finding experience. On the other hand, these inspections have been found to have three significant drawbacks. While working in the Department of Periodontics, you must have noticed that you could not do any complex procedures like extraction or complex restorations in school kids without the presence of their parents. Similarly, for a dental inspection to be conducted, parents should be present during the examination. But that is not always feasible during school inspections. It has also been noticed that both parents and children consider the school dental inspections to be comprehensive and depend entirely upon it rather than getting a complete dental examination done by the family dentist. Additionally, the fact that some kids had a negative dental experience the first time around meant that they were less likely to be motivated to visit their dentist regularly. Next, the third element of significance is conducting dental health education. This basically threw light on the fact that a school dental health program should try and include a formal approach to teaching dental health in a classroom. For this purpose, dental professionals can be chosen as the resource people, thus helping in strengthening the teacher's classroom instruction program. It is advised that self-contained dental health kits for teacher education and presentation should be made available to every school. 
The next component of school dental health is performing specific programs. These may include toothbrushing or classroom-based fluoride programs. It could also include school water fluoridation and sealant placement programs, as well as science fairs. Nowadays, nutrition as a part of school preventive dentistry programs has also been introduced in schools. For example, in the toothbrushing programs, six to eight children are taught in a group at once. They are given a cup and napkin along with a kit containing a disclosing tablet to help them understand which areas they need to pay more attention to. A toothbrush and fluoridated toothpaste. The resource person first demonstrates on a dental model how the brush should be angulated at 45 degrees angulation, followed by short vibratory strokes. The children are then asked to demonstrate under the direct supervision of the dental professional or the school teacher. Some of the classroom-based programs include fluoride tablet and fluoride mouth rinse programs. In the fluoride tablet program, one tablet of 2.2 mg sodium fluoride is given to each student on every school day and is advised to consume in a swish and swallow technique. Daily usage of these fluoride tablets containing 1 mg of fluoride have shown a 30% reduction in the occurrence of dental caries and is hence suitable for preschool children. The fluoride mouth rinse program received official recognition of safety from the FDA in 1974 and by Council on Dental Therapeutics of ADA in 1975. This program led to a decrease in dental caries occurrence by 20% to 40%. Here, 2 grams of sodium fluoride powder is placed in a jug, to which 1 litre of water is added. 5 ml of this rinse is then dispensed into a cup. All children are instructed to rinse with this solution for 1 minute. Moving on, our fifth element is the referral for dental care. In some schools, the students are given a referral card, which they then take back home and then to their family dentist. The dentist then performs a complete examination and treats any existing condition. He then signs the referral card, which the student has to then return to the school nurse or classroom teacher so that they can maintain a record for following up on the referrals with the child and parents. This situation where the patient is referred to the dentist without any specific cause for a referral or when the referral is made blanketly without any particular focus or direction is referred to as a blanket referral. The last component is that of follow-up. It is usually the dental hygienist that conduct the follow-up examinations. It is considered to be better if there are leave concessions from schools for dental treatments. This is because the children are observed to be more cooperative during their school hours, that is, the early or middle part of the day. Also, if dentists have sufficient time in hand, they can provide better services. But to ensure there is no abuse of the school, excuse system, the student needs to get signatures from the school officials, dentists, as well as their parents on a form. This also ensures that the appointment was actually kept. Now, to quickly recap, there are six elements of the school oral health program. First is improving the school community relations, followed by conducting dental inspections and dental health education. The fourth component is performing specific programs like toothbrushing programs or fluoride water mouth rinse. The fifth element is a referral for dental care, followed by a follow-up of the treatment and care provided. When writing elements for your exams, Remember to first always mention the elements. After that, only go into explaining each in detail. In conclusion, school oral health programs are critical in promoting good oral health habits among school children and preventing dental problems. The key elements of school oral health programs include oral health education, screening and assessment, preventive services and partnerships. By working together, we can ensure that school children have the tools and knowledge they need to maintain good oral health for life. That brings us to the end of this session. Think out of the box. Explore more such videos on our website.